Hello, so I wanted to do a video where I talked about the evolution of panoramic lens respirators. So generally the term that gets used for a respirator where you've got one big lens in the mask as opposed to two sort of eye hole lenses is a panoramic re respirator, as in you've got a panoramic field of vision. And if you think like a panoramic photo, it's generally one long photo. It's the same sort of idea. You've got one long field of vision rather than having two smaller fields of vision with these sort of eyepieces. So how did masks evolve like this? Well, if you want to go back in history to World War I, the first example I can think of of a mask that you might be able to term as a panoramic respirator was the British smoke hood or hypo hood or hypo helmet smoke helmet. And what that was is a bit like pH gas hood but it just had one single piece of, I imagine it was celluloid in the middle and a little rectangle. Now, it probably would not have given the wearer a very good field of view at all. And then if you think to things like the British World War II civilian mask, again, you had a single piece of celluloid in the middle. Wouldn't offer a particularly good field of view, but it was one piece in the eye bits rather than two separate eye holes. So, the concept goes back probably just about as far as gas masks and respirators do. It's the idea of having a single lens rather than two eye holes. However, there are lots of problems with the early ones. Obviously, if you're using something like celluloid, you know, it's flexible, it doesn't say stay straight, which might sound like a good thing. But obviously, for wear and tear, celluloid is a lot weaker than glass, more likely to ripple tear, you know. Even though glass can break, you need quite a hard impact to break glass, whereas celluloid rips far more easily because it's a lot more fragile. Also, for lots of military masks, Obviously the technology wasn't there back in the day to make one big piece of, you know, strong glass or something like that. Now, what I'm going to show you in a second is the Seed Gorman Vista Vision, because as far as I'm aware, that's the first mask I can think of that starts to look more like modern panoramic masks, rather than just being a military mask that has a rectangular piece of celluloid in the middle, which doesn't really offer a better field of view than a conventional one. So what are the advantages of a panoramic mask? Obviously a much better field of view. Because as you can imagine, I'm not having to sort of do that where I'm looking for a mask like that. If you compare the sort of two masks, as you can imagine, a much better field of view is something like this. Now, a mask like this isn't ideal. The main problem with this mask is, as you can see, the oral nasal cup is actually a solid piece of rubber. Some much more, you know, cleverly designed panoramic masks actually use clear silicon for this, or polyurethane, whatever they want to use, because you can see through it. Now, experiments were done on masks with polyurethane lenses and silicon lenses, such as the MCU-2P and the Polish MP5 and the French mask it's based on. But there's some disadvantages of that, because the issue is with the flexible kind of rubbery materials that you could use for a lens rather than a hard plastic or glass is that obviously they're much more vulnerable to chemical agents something like plastic or glass isn't going to be affected all that much by blister agents however something like polyurethane or silicon is quite vulnerable to blister agents so certain chemicals will eat through the mask you know faster also again it's a strength thing lots of companies or you know nations couldn't make panoramic lenses that were big and strong you know it was much easier to have two smaller stronger eyepieces on a mask than one big sort of frame in the middle, you know, glass, plastic, whatever you wanted to use that was solid. So there's the sort of technology, you know, technology aspect to this as well. Also, you'll find for a lot of panoramic masks, you can't aim down sights that well with them. Because of the curvature of the glass, whatever, they can distort your vision of sights, or you won't be able to get a very good cheek round looking down sight. However, these have definitely improved over the years, and it's now getting to the stage where I think panoramic lenses are better than the uh, alternative, but it's taken a long time. So anyway, let me show you the Seed Gorman Vista Vision, and I'll show you a very early example of a panoramic lens mask. So, on the left there, you can see the Seed Gorman Vista Vision. Now, that's just one solid bit of glass. Now, the issue of the Vista Vision is, as far as I'm aware, most did not have oral nasal cups in. So, while you get a very good field of view, they fog up very quickly, which is an issue. It's much easier to have a mask that doesn't fog up if it's not a panoramic lens, because you can do Tissot systems much more efficiently and everything else. Now, if I just pan the camera down a bit, you'll see there, on the right, is a Polish MP5 mask with, um, not, it's like a spares and repairs one. But you can see the soft polyurethane panoramic lens there. 
So, right, it's a military mask with a panoramic lens. Obviously, the problem with something like polyurethane is, as I said, it's a lot more vulnerable to blister agents and sort of certain chemicals and UV damage and everything else than conventional plastic or glass lenses are. Okay, so now let's look at an actual good military spec panoramic mask. Now, this is the Scott M98, which is basically a military variant of the Scott Pro mask. The difference is this one has a drinking tube adapter on the side, as you can see, so you can use it with a drinking tube. So all in all, very good, and as you can see, drinking tubes inside the mask there. Now, brilliant thing about this mask is, as you'll see, clear silicon-type material inside to offer a better field of view. So what that means is, obviously, once we put the filter on, when you look through this mask, you actually get a very good field of view, which isn't obscured by the oral nasal cup. Because, obviously, also, one of the problems you would have with a panoramic mask is that it's harder to make one that doesn't fog up, and if you put a conventional oral nasal cup in, that's going to cut your vision off. Well, while this one has a silicon oral nasal cup, I can see through that oral nasal cup. Yes, it blurs your vision slightly, but it's much better having a clear one than a solid black rubber one or whatever other colour. But again, you've still got issues with some of these masks where they can distort your vision on sight. Thanks to plastics like polycarbonate, you can get a very strong lens that's a lot more strong than glass. Um, you can curve without distorting the vision too much of the wearer. And again, it's got the strength it needs in a military application. Because industrial masks have certainly been trying the panoramic design for longer than military masks. But it seems now lots of modern military masks are going down the panoramic route. first example I can think of that was widely adapted was probably the USMC U2P. Then you had the Scott GSR. You had the Avon M50. The FM53 has a solid sort of thing there. Polish MP5s and all the other masks that that's, you know, the French, well it's a copy of a French mask and other nations have used a similar one. Things like the Scott M98 are doing this now. So it seems like thanks to the invention of better materials you can actually start making military masks with a panoramic style thing. Now you'll be able to see the light distorting on that, so yes there is a bit of distortion to vision but it's not too bad. Now how I think you may be able to make a full face panoramic mask that would work very well is if we take this Chinese example, you'd basically do this, you'd put a clear oral nasal cup in it, like on this Scott mask, the M98, so you can, again, get a better field of view. And then what you'd do, is you'd actually make the front bit flat plastic. So you basically have it like that, but it'd be flat. And that means that you'd be able to use scopes without an issue with the mask. So you could have the front bit being completely flat, and then you could probably angle the plastic away. It is possible to do that on a uh, polycarbonate lens. My Spassiani, is it the TR2002? Although the front isn't flat, it does have angled bits of the polycarbonate on the single piece of lens. So it's certainly possible to do that. So hopefully that's given you sort of a bit of an overview of the evolution of panoramic design masks. Some military and civil defence masks started off with celluloid lenses, but they were very sort of thin rectangles, probably vastly inferior to the um, military two-lens variants. Then, industrial masks from about the 50s onward, where you started seeing things like the Steve Gorman Vista Vision, started trying it, and again, for industry use, because they weren't expecting to be treated as badly as masks that would be in military service, they'd be thrown around unless they'd be taken care of better and they'd be exposed to chemicals you knew what they'd be exposed to, not, you know, anything the enemy could think to gash you with. The um, masks are obviously better suited for industry, because obviously, if you're wearing a mask like this, it's less claustrophobic, and it's also less intimidating for other people in a non-military application, because obviously, people can see more of your face, so it's a bit less worrying than if they're wearing a mask, you know, like this, where they can only really see your eyes. So... And then over time, as, you know, better concepts of making these masks and materials has come about, it seems they're now suited for military masks. So my opinion's now actually changing to the point that polycarbonate sort of panoramic masks are, I think, better than the two lens masks when they're made to a good standard. But there's a lot more ifs and buts because you actually have to uh, have very good design features when you're making a panoramic mask to make it serviceable. Well, when you're making a mask of triangular or circular islands, there's, there's a lot more you can, you know, do wrong in a sense and still get a functioning mask out of it. So, there you go. That's a bit of the history of panoramic masks. Hopefully you found them interesting. But I think panoramic masks are going to be a thing to watch 
because I think more and more militaries are going to be adopting panoramic lens style designs and I think they'll continue to improve and overall I think they are better because you do get a better field of view and as plastic technology improves and everything else you'll get less distortion to your vision and you know lots of other improvements in strength and hopefully more people will copy the clear silicon nose cup idea so that doesn't interfere with your field of view as much either but yeah panoramic masks I think are here to stay at this point and the designs will keep improving